Now, when analysing a circuit, your first step is always to model it, just like for mechanics. Why? Well, we find that students of this class tend to jump into equations much too fast. You want to be sure you understand what's going on in full detail before write down equations, otherwise you will invariably write down the wrong equations. And that means modelling. So let's say we're trying to model this circuit. First step is to draw a very big diagram. Now remember that the wires can be lengthened and shortened as much as you like in the diagram, it makes no difference. I tend to like to put everything along the top. So we can start off here and we've got a voltage source. Then we follow the wire around here, we'll just draw it as a straight line. And here we've got a resistor. Then the wire splits. One branch goes to another voltage source. The other branch goes to another resistor. And then it loops all the way back around again at the bottom. Now I like to draw it like this with as much as possible along the top because it makes it easier to do graphs of uh, voltage and uh, things like that. But your mileage may differ. An important thing is to draw this whole thing pretty big because you're going to want to add lots of things to it. The first thing you're going to want to add is currents. Now you may not always know which way the current's going to flow. In this case it's pretty obvious. Or is it? I like to draw with variable thickness to show how it's splitting. So let's have we have a current here. And I'll draw it quite thick because it's going to be a big current here. And then it's going to split. Some of the current's going to go this way and some of the current's going to go that way. So I draw it a bit thinner there. This is just a visual representation of where things are splitting. By and large, a current, which is the flow of electrons, can't disappear down a wormhole or uh, anything else like that. So whatever current's going into a node, that's a node, a junction of wires must be the same going out. So if you've got the current there, there must be the same thick drawn current over here, same thick drawn current over there. We've got the thin current here and thin current there, thin current there, and then the thick current over here. So that's the first step. Take your real circuit and draw it as a nice big um, circuit diagram with idealized components and then mark in the currents, probably give them names like I1, I2 and I3. I is traditionally used for current, don't ask me why.